you can see how close uh, the all-terrain vehicles actually were in position. And now uh, the all-terrain vehicle uh, speeding uh, to the uh, site of the capsule to begin the recovery of the crew. Again, this is a replay of the landing uh, that occurred uh, just over an hour ago. And now uh, a view of uh, the Soyuz capsule. This was prior to the time that, that the search and recovery uh, forces uh, arrived in the all-terrain vehicle as they arrived in close proximity to the Soyuz to begin the extraction of the crew. Again, uh, this is a replay of uh, the extraction of the crew from the Soyuz uh, TMA-15 capsule. Uh, you're looking at the extraction of the Soyuz commander, Roman Romanenko, completing uh, his first trip into space, 188 days in space, 186 days on the International Space Station, second-generation cosmonaut, following in the footsteps of his father, Yuri Romanenko. With a big smile and a big wave, Romanenko uh, carried a short distance into uh, the all-terrain vehicle. He was followed a short time later by Bob Thirsk, and then finally by Frank Dewina. All three crew members, all three crew members, again reported to be in excellent shape, doing very well. And now we have a, a slight revision to the landing time. The landing time now uh, reported uh, by the uh, Russian flight director at the Russian Mission Control Center as 1.15 and 34 seconds a.m. It was first reported uh, at 1.17, but again, the official landing time now uh, reported by the Russian flight director at 1.15 and 34 seconds a.m. Central Time, 1.15 and 34 seconds p.m at Kazakhstan. You're now uh, watching the extraction uh, of uh, the crew from the Soyuz TMA-15. Again, a uh, rather methodical process uh, to help the crew out of uh, the Soyuz vehicle. Again, uh, feeling the first effects of gravity after 188 days of weightlessness. That's Bob Thirsk from the Canadian Space Agency, the flight engineer, wrapping up uh, his six months in space. This is uh, a, a normal procedure uh, for a Soyuz vehicle that lands uh, in an upright position to essentially extract uh, the crew member, place them in uh, what amounts to a, a stretcher, uh, that uh, enables them to be carried down to, uh, in this case, uh, to be placed in the all-terrain vehicle. As usual, uh, there is, uh, when, when there is a typical landing operation involving helicopters, uh, the crew will have a chance to spend uh, some time uh, in reclining chairs to acclimate themselves, but in this case, uh, to expedite uh, their return uh, to Arkalik. Uh, in the all-terrain vehicles, uh, they were simply placed on uh, stretcher-like devices, and uh, as you saw in the case of Bob Thirsk, uh, uh, duplicating uh, what uh, occurred uh, with the extraction of Commander Soyuz Commander Roman Romanenko just a few minutes ago. Uh, they are placed on these uh, stretcher-like devices and then simply slid into the all-terrain vehicles uh, for the ride uh, of about uh, 80 kilometers uh, back to Arkalik. And uh, now you see uh, Frank DeWinna, the European Space Agency uh, crew member, completing his second landing in a Soyuz vehicle. He was on a, a Soyuz taxi crew in 2001 that delivered a fresh Soyuz vehicle to the fledgling International Space Station and its uh, crew on board. Uh, Duena uh, wrapping up uh, 199 days in space on two flights. He was, uh, again, the commander of the, the International Space Station, the first European Space Agency commander of the station, being helped out by uh, the recovery teams
he will be helped on to that uh, soft stretcher uh, to be uh, carried just a few feet uh, to be placed uh, in the all-terrain vehicle, a wave uh, for the cameras uh, at the landing site. This video courtesy of Roscosmos from their all-terrain vehicle. And now Duenna to be brought uh, toward the all-terrain vehicle.